Hello, Godower. Today, I'll teach you how I achieved a pixel-perfect zoom for the dialogue in Cats vs. Aliens. Please excuse the quality of my voice today, as seasonal allergies have gotten the best of me, but I wanted to record this video anyway. This video will assume you are familiar with the Godot game engine and the basics of GDScript. If you are just starting out, please see the description for my recommendations on where to learn first, and maybe go have a watch of my video on project structure. Now, on to the good stuff. Godot 3.5 has a notorious quirk with low-res games and high-res fonts. To be able to render beautiful text over a low-res world, your options are pretty limited. You can either scale up all of your artwork and sort of fake the low-res aspect of it, or you can choose to use a sub-viewport to render your game world while having your GUI as a separate canvas layer. If there are other methods out there, please comment below and share them, or if you know of any special methods in Godot 4 that would work, uh, please let me know because I don't know what they are. For Cats vs. Aliens, I opted to split my game world from my GUI. While this has worked well enough to achieve the dichotomy of styles I was going for, it has presented its own set of challenges. In this case, the problem is that when I zoom the camera in on two characters in dialogue, the pixel ratio is broken from the grid and it becomes this ugly, muddy mess. I experimented with many different techniques to attempt to address this, everything from messing with my scene tree hierarchy to auto loads to shaders on individual characters and even a shader on the entire viewport. Nothing worked. Then I found this video by Pixter and the original source from which it drew its inspiration. I watched it several times and was able to rip out the bits I needed and leave behind the ones I didn't. And now I have working zoom without degrading the quality of the art. And that leads us to the part you actually came here for. Again, this video will assume an intermediate level of knowledge of Godot 3.5. And as always, this is just the way I've done it, and the best way to do something is the way that works for you and your project. If you do have any questions along the way, I'll be happy to answer them if you just leave me a comment, either in this comment section on this video, or if you pop over to Discord, I am pretty active there most of the days. Okay, so to start, here are the project settings that I have set up for Cats vs. Aliens to make this work. My window size is set to 1280 by 800 the target resolution for the window of my game. My mode is set to 2D, and my aspect is set to keep. Note that I have not really experimented with these settings that much to see if it matters. If you do try it out with other modes or aspects, let me know in the comments how it's worked out for you. To get this to work in your project, you'll need to have this same basic setup for your scene tree. The root can be a node or a control, it doesn't particularly matter. As a child of that, you will need a viewport container, and a viewport as a child of that container. Then you'll have your game world as a child of that viewport. We are also going to want a canvas layer to house your GUI as a child of your root node, which makes it a sibling of the viewport container. This is where all of your high-res text and other GUI elements will live. The viewport container and the viewport will both have their rect size set to the same as the resolution of your game world. They should be the low-res value, not the high-res value. In this demo project, I'll be using a window size of 1280 by 720, with a viewport size of 320 by 180. Now, if we were to run the scene as is, you'll notice that it only takes up a small amount of your actual window. To fix this, we're gonna use the scale property of the viewport container in the inspector. The scale value will be the number that you're gonna multiply your viewport container resolution by to reach the window size. Now, if you run the project, it should look a lot better. Now, on to the code. First, you need to decide where your Zoom code should live. This can be anywhere in code with access to a reference to the viewport container node. I chose to add it to my dialogue handler, as dialogue events are the only ones I want to zoom in for. If you're going to want to zoom in for several different events, consider adding the zoom functions to the global that holds the viewport container reference. For Cats vs. Aliens, I have the viewport container register itself to a global autoload on setup, which means my zoom in code could live anywhere. We need a couple of variables, or constants if you prefer here, to start out. We'll need the default scale, the desired zoom-in scale, and of course a reference to the viewport container. You'll also see a reference in the code here to zoom in and zoom out buttons, but those are just for the purposes of this demo. Now to make this work, we're actually going to tween the scale of the viewport container. So first for our zoom-in function, we're going to create a new scene tree tween, 
stop it so it doesn't run until we tell it to, and set its easing and transition via code. We then tween the scale property of the viewport container to the new value, which is the zoom in scale. Doing it this way instead of modifying a camera 2D's zoom value will retain the adherence to the pixel grid, allowing us to fake bringing the camera closer to the characters without making things look, well, bad. But we can't stop here. This tween will scale the viewport container from the top left corner as seems to be the case with all control nodes you manipulate through code rather than the editor. Now we get into some maths. We're going to move the container in both the X and the Y axes for this compensation to work. To get our new position, we divide the product of the window size and the zoom-in scale by twice the default scale, then subtract the window width. And since that sentence barely felt coherent when I was saying it, here's what that math looks like. Now I'll go ahead and add that property tween to the function. Since I want these to run at the same time, I'll also set the tween to parallel. To make things a little neater, I've made a separate function that calculates the position rather than adding it to the zoom in function directly. If you want to modify where the zoom in centers itself, say for instance you want the position to be between two characters in conversation, this is where you'd make those adjustments. Then for zooming out, we just undo the things we've done by doing the opposite tweens. You'll set your scale back to your default, and you'll set your rect position back to vector 2.0. Then we just call this function where we want zooms to happen, and we get this beautiful pixel-perfect zooming in Godot 3.5. And that's really it! This demo project is available on GitHub for you to poke through at your leisure. The link to that, as well as links to the asset pack used and the video by Pixter are in the description. Hopefully you found this video helpful, even if it is for Godot 3.5 and you're on 4.x now. Uh, if you have found it helpful, please consider subscribing so you can be notified about future videos. As always, please leave a comment with any questions or comments or constructive criticisms, and I will do my best to respond in a timely fashion. Have an amazing day, and happy Godoting!